In March 2016, we got some very good news from the first daratumumab combo phase three caster study in about 500 patients with relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma. The study regimen was so effective that the Data Safety and Monitoring Committee decided that they would just halt the trial prematurely. So one of the big stories from ASCO, as you might imagine, relates to additional data from this study. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Antonio Palumbo, who is an MD and the PI for this uh, study. He is the Chief of the Myeloma Unit at the Department of Oncology at the University of Torino in Italy. First, congratulations. Thank you very much. What a great trial you've got here. Now, let's go back and just establish, remind us of the Castor study, what you're doing here. Here is a randomized studies comparing a free drug combination, daratunumab, the novel agent we will discuss, plus bortezomib and dexamethasone, the current standard of care for relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. And this free drug combination has been compared with the two drug combination, bortezomib and dexamethasone. And the treatment has been delivered in relapsed refractory myeloma. So this is an immunotherapy plus standard care? Absolutely, yes. This is uh, the, I usually say, the R-CHOP for myeloma. So we do have today a, a mu a monoclonal that is uh, hitting a major antigen for myeloma. CD38 is widely expressed on plasma cells. That is highly cytotoxic, so tumor direct uh, activity uh, by the antibody. But on top, there is also what now is becoming more and more relevant, and. Uh, increase activity of the immune system because through the CD38 pathway, these antibodies are uh, able to increase the activity of the helper T cells from one side, but also to reduce the negative activity of the regulatory suppressive cells. So there is a major increase also in the immunostimulation of the body against the tumor. Now, there must have been some impressive results to have the uh, Safety and Monitoring Committee just say, <laughs> this, this is good. Was, this this is, is really impressive because you, you can imagine, first, the accrual was one year for 500 patients very fast. So this is already telling that people want to use this drug. Second, after three months from the last patient, uh, the safety monitor stopped the trial because they, they, they hit the boundary. And that was a preset and, analysis. Yeah. So Great from plan. that point of view, unprecedented. And uh, if you look at the results, as a ratio 3-9, 61% reduction in, in the risk of progression. And if you look at the best, the previous uh, myeloma studies, they go to 50. 056, 06, and that's where the, the best available studies until now. So this is certainly something different. And the p-value is 0 0.0001, <laughs> which is very good. How about the overall uh, response rate? Uh, this is uh, the other major finding. There was basically a doubling in both uh, CR rate and VGPR rate, so the profound cyto reduction. And this is also very important because if you reach a VGPR or a CR, your remission duration can be even triplicated. So from one side, you increase the proportion of people with a, a very good re response, and this translates, of course, in a prolonged remission duration. What about safety? Safety is, uh, as it is uh, usually in this combination, very good. Monoclonals are not adding uh, cumulative toxicity to a, the existing background. So basically the toxicity were identical in the control and the experimental arm. The only difference is the presence of infusion reaction. 45% of patients, uh, mainly grade one or two, as you usually see in other antibodies like rituximab. So where do we go from here? Uh, from here, we go to build up uh, first a combination that will probably in the future always uh, include the monoclonal antibodies in the, in the combination. And second, uh, we have to move as quick as we can to the early phases of the disease because if you look at these studies, 
the studies we just presented today is uh, doubling the remission duration. If you go in the, uh, and, and this of course is an expectation, if you go at diagnosis where today you already have four to five years of remission duration, if you're doubling, you go to eight, ten years. So this will be a major change. So how long do you think before uh, it will be uh, proposed for approval? You are touching a very relevant uh, problem because uh, you see the study for the newly diagnosed patients are underway. But if you have to wait four to five to seven years, this will take a long, long time. So, you know, this is an ongoing discussion with regulators. I think it should be important to have a conditional approval when you have a very important and relevant drug to use early on and then to be confirmed by the study. But, you know, this is not my, my yes. task. <laughs> exactly, absolutely. Well, congratulations again and thank you very thank you much. Very nice. We have a variety of uh, reports for you, both online and in print. Please look for those for American Medical Communications. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.